Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is kind of a beginner tutorial talking about the sine and the cosine functions. They are very important in all sorts of animation or setups, such as ocean waves, flames, various knitting patterns, and even looping animations, such as tree wiggling. This is also a bit intermediate because more importantly, I want you to use the preset of sine function instead. In this tutorial, at first, you should be able to learn the basics if you do not know the sine function trigonometry well yet. And I hope at the last you will understand why using the preset is so helpful. You can download the preset for free from the link in the description, or you can construct it from scratch using what you learned in this tutorial. The sine function is a popular math function that can work in all kinds of scenarios in 3D industry. Whether it's uh, shader materials, geometry nodes, compositor, or even drivers, and so on and so forth. For the purpose of good visualization, I'm going to use geometry nodes to demonstrate it. Here I have a resampled curve line lying on the x-axis, and I'm using set position node to offset it on the z-axis using the sine function. Here I'm going to put the x distance value of the position, into our sine function. Then you see the basic form of it. The mass formula version is also written in this text panel as we will modify it later. Here you will see a sine function is a looping waveform of going up and down. It's looping at 2 pi. This means every time the distance reaches 2 pi, it will complete an entire cycle of going up and down reaching the original position at zero and then starting another cycle. To confirm this, we can restrict the entire length to 2 pi. And in Blender, an easy way to do it is to type TAU tall, so you can get it immediately. So now you see we have a full cycle of sine function. Now, it's very important to understand the parameters inside and outside the sine function. In the node tree, they are defined as before and after the sine function. Inside the sine box, as you see, it's closely related to the x distance we input. And uh, we have already played with 2 pi distance to see a full cycle. If we change the distance to 1, then we only have a tiny trace of the sine function being plotted. However, as you may imagine, if we have a multiplier to scale this distance one up to distance two pi, it will complete a full cycle in such a short distance. We call this multiplier the frequency. If we now recover the distance two pi in our original curve line, you see there are many more cycles up and down being plotted. Now let's take away this frequency for the moment. What if you add or subtract inside of this sign box? As you are adding or subtracting the x value, the position of 2 pi changes, and thus the position completing the full cycle will change. This is called a phase, which is the main way to animate a sign function. And uh, you will see it has an obvious looping property. Every 2 pi of phase will result in completely identical results. Here at 0, we have this image. If we set it to tall, we have another same image. I also want to remind you about the cosine. If you duplicate the entire function, switching sine to cosine, and the joint geometry to compare their results, you see they are nearly identical. Sine starts at 0, cosine starts at 1. In fact, the only difference between the two functions is that they differ their phase by half of pi, or pi divided by 2. So you don't really need to switch sine to cosine. You just add a phase of pi divided by 2, and you will get an identical result as cosine. Now we are clear with the usage of phase. If we combine the phase with frequency, we will have two kinds of phase. One is what I call relative phase. 
it's added to the x value before frequency. So it will be multiplied by the frequency as well. The other is what I call constant phase, as it's independent from the frequency. I personally prefer constant phase more because I can directly set the 2pi to loop the animation without any issue. Whereas for relative phase, I need to stop and think about what the actual offset is due to the frequency multiplier. However, both of them have their use cases. Now we have basically finished the inside part of this sign box. Let's discuss the outside. A normal sign function has its amplitude range from negative one to positive one, similar to the size of a default cube. This means if you have a multiplier outside the entire sign function box, you can scale the range up and down. Here, let's use a multiply math node after the sign function. And you see the scale behaves as expected. You can also add or subtract to shift the entire amplitude as a whole, but this is very rarely used in practice for the sign function. Another probable use is to map the negative one to positive one range into a zero to one range. So you can combine it with a color ramp or float curve using it for shaders and so on. This is basically all about the sign function. If you work in the 3D industry, this will probably be a kindergarten level stuff. And as this function is so important, but it takes so many nodes and the linkages in Blender, you will want to group everything into an asset. And here it is called sign function in my presets, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Whether you use my free assets or your own, it will probably be a waste if you spend much time on this kindergarten level thing. It's not reasonable that other people are learning how to drive a car while you're still crawling behind trying to invent wheels. Of course, in Blender, we actually have a wave texture that uses the exact same principle as the sign function. But I feel it's a bit unintuitive to use in practice compared to laying it out directly as the math formula. Therefore, the basic usage of my preset has already been covered, where you see frequency, relative and constant phase, amplitudes, a map range for zero to one, and so on and so forth. The decimal shift has been discussed in the value position tutorial. Also, you can read the tooltip for what it's doing. There's also an additional setting called the linear, which eliminates the curvature inherited from the sine wave. This can be important when you try to remap the relationship using a float curve. Internally, instead of the sine function, it's using ping pong, which follows basically the same principle, but in a linear fashion. It also has an advanced setting for oscillation. You can try to play around with values yourself and see I don't use it much now, nor will I spend much time on it. I use it to have tutorials using the cosine function. So how do you get the cosine function from this preset without a cosine setting? Here, I'm not going to tell you the answer because I just explained it clearly in the tutorial. Consider this question as a homework assignment for this lesson. Lastly, the sign function can be used to build lots of knitting patterns. I do have a knitting unit, a knitting surface, and a woven surface. We may discuss them in more details in the future, along with the Blender hair curves development. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.